Coming up next on The Jeff Curley Show, he helps high-achieving professionals unlock their genius. His story, just ahead. Many are predicting that the worst is yet to come, which is unfortunate, said one person here. Until now, they've enjoyed the reputation of being the nation's icebox. Watched a burglar in his home this morning by webcam. As a journalist of over 25 years, stories are what make my world turn. Before life from the Dallas Newsroom tonight, Jeff Crilly, Fox 4 News. But in 2008, I took the jump from my familiar life and started a PR firm from my home. We're talking about anyone with a camcorder like the one I'm using becomes a television network. We started slowly growing the company and we now have over a hundred clients and we've branched into the world of live digital broadcasting. I now own eight different TV studios and have a huge team. And the stories that I now get to share are sometimes the most important of my life. Life has a funny way of coming around full circle. This is the Jeff Crilly Show. Well, I can promise you that there are millions and millions of high achieving professionals and CEOs out there who are absolutely miserable. They climb to the top of the hill or the mountain that they were climbing and thought that they would find glory at the top of the, of the mountain or the hill and instead they found desperation. That's when they turn to people like my next, my next guest, Kevin Keppel. He's a speaker, podcaster, two-time best-selling author and uh, an expert on really helping people get unstuck. Thanks for coming on the show. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. Okay, so I want to know more about your journey. Um, did you, uh, were you kind of a worker bee at one point before you went out and, and coached? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's such a great question because, you know, I did like so many people. I went to college because I really didn't know what else to do. And I remember talking to my advisor and she's like, what do you want to do? I'm like, I have no idea. I was hoping you could tell me. And <laughs> I got a degree in strategic management and, uh, you know, I got a job like you're supposed to do. And... I was creating success, but I was completely unhappy. And then I felt really guilty because I felt like I was ungrateful. Like I, I'm building wealth, uh, winning at my job, but like I'm completely disconnected from the work. I'm not happy, I'm not fulfilled. And like, there's gotta be more. I'm like, no amount of money is gonna make me happy. And fortunately I had the wherewithal after years and it feels like decades to get a coach. And my coach really helped me see that I was just simply misaligned with my natural gifts. The things I was doing were out of alignment. and you know, happiness comes from alignment and that's where energy comes from. And, you know, sure. like I was misaligned because I was trying to fulfill these childhood ideas that the ego has of like what I need to be complete and whole. And so, you know, long story short, I got a great coach. He helped me see that uh, I'd be a lot happier mentoring and coaching people. And so, well, yeah, well, uh, what are your own strengths as, as you've, you know, really had a deep dive on, on who Kevin is? Uh, what are you born to do? I think I'm born to really help people see what makes them truly unique and how they can use that to create value for other people. Because at the end of the day, you know, the point of life to me is growth and giving. The more we grow, the more we can give. And we all have unique gifts and talents. And the more we understand how to use those in the service of others, like the better, the better it is for everybody. Amen. I'm glad that you found your, your calling. We're going to pull up your website. And as we pull down the website and scroll down, I want to talk about the kinds of uh, clients you like to work with. Um, does it cross all industries? Yeah, absolutely. So really, we work with different types of leaders that, uh, you know, quite often you kind of touched on are suffering from this achievement apathy. It's like they're winning on the scoreboard like I was, but they're disconnected from the work. And it's a lot of fun to really kind of turn the lights on for people and help them understand like, hey, you know, there's nothing wrong with you. Like, you know, we're all just trying to figure this out and just walk each other home. And so, you know, really the requirements to be you know, part of our company are you just have to be humble because if you're humble, that gives you the ability to see good and value in other people and their ideas. And it's really phenomenal how fast you can go towards whatever your version of amazing is when you're really aligned with these natural gifts and talents that you have. Right before the show, I asked Kevin, tell me one of your favorite success stories. Um, and I said, you don't have to give their name, but um, tell the story again. Sure. Uh, we'll call her Mary. So when I started working with Mary, she was a pretty high achiever. I mean, she was making half a million dollars a year in profit, right? That's great money. And she said to me pretty much verbatim, you know what? I couldn't be more unhappy. My life feels like chaos on a good day. I work eight to six. And when I get home, I'm still at work and I snap at the kids and, you know, my relationship with my husband suffers. And I just, I don't even know what the point in all this is. And, you know, what a frustrating life to live. But, you know, in a really short amount of time, in less than a year, she was able to 
align with the natural genius that she has, which, you know, genius is far more about being in the habit of expressing your genius than it is actual natural talent. But once she really aligned with this authentic version of her, she understood the things that she was doing that she could stop doing that were potentially taking her away from how she wanted to be and feel. And, you know, like I said, in less than a year, she doubled her income. She's working eight to five and taking Fridays off and she's happier than she's ever been. And like, this isn't an outlier. This is like really common results because it's, it's so phenomenal to help somebody align with these really powerful parts of them, but also to show them where the blind spots are. Hey, here's what it looks like when you give your power away, because it's so hard to see ourselves accurately because I can't read the label from inside the box. And it's like, we're pressed up against the glass of our own life and we need somebody to help us see the things we're not seeing. Wow. He also has a very popular podcast. We're going to pull up his YouTube um, channel. And you can just see dozens and dozens of episodes. Tell us more about the podcast and the kinds of guests that you invite. Sure. So Unlock Your Freedom uh, with me. And uh, I love to interview just entrepreneurs and executives that are really looking to unlock their freedom. Kind of the four freedoms we're all looking for. You know, the freedom to build wealth, of course. But, uh, you know, the freedom to make time our friend and not our enemy. And the freedom to have relationships that are mutually beneficial and co-creating and co-elevating where you know, we feel actually fulfilled from the relationship because I know the times in my life when I felt the most fulfilled is when I had deep connection in my relationships. And then, you know, just the freedom to work towards a purpose that we're ignited on a soul level to. And, you know, that's pretty phenomenal to get to come across people on a regular basis and get to unpack their story and to share that with, uh, you know, the public. And Absolutely. So. Well, if, if you're interested in hiring Kevin, I urge you to go back to his website and look at, through some of the testimonials because he has countless testimonials. Here's one of my favorites. What would you say to somebody who's thinking about signing up for a group with us? I would say don't hesitate because you'll learn things that, well, as a learner, <laughs> I love to learn, <laughs> <laughs> that you will learn things that like I thought I knew some of these things, but just from the different angles and listening to other people and what their strengths are and how they use them. I mean, you can't teach that. It's just something that you become a part. I mean, the group is you become a part of that and you really, it really helps you to understand um, where other people are coming from. So I love that part of it. And she's an example of somebody who was in a mastermind group that you led. Yeah, absolutely. So I think it's so phenomenal when we can create these spaces or communities for people that are, you know, like-minded on like-minded journeys. And I know I was resistant before I ever joined a mastermind personally. Because I was like, well, I got my own problems. They're very unique. And yeah. it's so nice to see that, you know, everybody's kind of got the same stuff, but just a little different. And to really just leverage that collective genius of the group and really go after whatever our version of amazing happens to look like. Let's talk a little bit about imposter syndrome because I think that's so popular today, especially if you have like a young person, somebody in their 20s, and they're leading a team and sometimes they're leading people their, their mom and dad's age. I mean, imposter syndrome is real, isn't it? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, there's some sort of a mix up. None of us are supposed to be here, right? Um, but uh, I think, you know, like this happened to me when I was in a leadership position in my 20s. I had people who were well older than me or way more experienced on earth, we could say. And uh, I felt like a, kind of a fraud because I didn't know how to like all the nuances of being a leader. But I've now learned that leadership is not a position. It's a behavior and an action because there's people in leadership positions who don't display leadership qualities. I was at a, a wedding a couple of weeks ago for a good friend and the little uh, ring bearer was like a foot tall, you know, and uh, he was terrified when he walked in. He saw these people looking at him. He tried to run out the front door and the two flower girls were like, no, it's okay, Thomas. And they walked him down the aisle and like, that's leadership right there. And like, nobody told them to do that. It's just the behavior of leadership and leadership's influence. And influence is simply creating trust and inspiring people to act on your ideas. Sure. I remember one time I was at uh, Fox 4 and I asked one of my managers uh, what he thought. And he was just, he was frustrated. He had a lot of stuff going on. He says, I don't know, Krill. I'm making it up as I go along, man. So, <laughs> it, it completely blew my mind. I was like, wow, making it up as you go along. But yeah, I guess sometimes, you know, in, especially in a, in a business where you have to move quickly and ad lib, you don't have a script. I mean, none of us had a script for the pandemic. It caused a lot of people to, to have to figure out a new leadership style. Absolutely. I, you know, and I think I've said what your former boss said many times. It's like, we're all just trying to figure it out and there's, there's no rules. Right. And you know what, like, as long as we're in this place of humility and really being intentional, 
about just choosing love over fear as a matter of habit, right? Because I get two choices. I can react from fear or I can create from love. And when I choose to create from love, generally, you know, good things happen. I build relationships. I create. I innovate. I do things I've never done before. But when I react from fear, I just continually repeat these past pain patterns over and over. And it's like Groundhog Day, except it's not fun like Bill Murray was having in the movie, right? It's just this frustrating, like, repetitive existence. Okay, how does somebody know when they need to bring in a Kevin Keppel? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think, I think everybody should find somebody that resonates with you, that it feels good to be around, that actually gives you energy to be with them and to help you see your blind spots. Nobody needs a coach, but I definitely want a coach. I work with a coach and I have for over a decade now because I want somebody to hold me accountable to a big vision that I have for myself. I want somebody to help me see my blind spots. And I want somebody to co-create whatever the vision I have for me and to help me create clarity on that consistently because there's a lot coming at us in this world and we get misaligned so easily, you know, 20 times before we even start our day. Mm -hmm. And so it's pretty phenomenal just to have somebody who can really help you master the art and psychology of influence, which is a large part of what we do. Outstanding. You've been an amazing guest. We're going to have to have you back again soon. We're going to end with Kevin's website, which is kevinkeppel.us. Thanks for coming on the show. Yeah, thanks for that. That's it for now. We'll see you next time.